you didn't really buy into the divine disinflation scenario. You're not buying into the resilience story either. Why not, Sam? Good morning, John. Our view is that either growth needs to slow by more than the market's currently pricing in, or central banks will have work to do. So in January, the market was pricing in a scenario where inflation got to levels consistent with central banks' mandates, but without any material slowdown in growth and without policy having to get that restrictive or stay there for that long. We've had a bit of a repricing in the market um, in February, where there's more concern now that central banks will have more work to do if growth doesn't slow. We've priced central bank expectations higher, we've priced inflation expectations higher, and we've priced out the timing of rate cuts following when terminal rates will be reached. The view we have at BNP Paribas is that there's still some further room to run on that repricing. So either equities are at risk to come lower or rates are at risk to still head high. If you had a bias right now, Sam, which one would it be? I think in the near term, the bias is that both could actually play out on the basis that the markets in this process of pricing a more hawkish policy outlet for the Federal Reserve. The data we have this week is going to be important, consumer confidence, ISM manufacturing, ISM services, but more crucially will be the payrolls data that we get um, just beyond a couple of weeks from now. Two I think the key away. point here will be on earnings. The, the view we've got, so, sorry to cut you off there, John, is that you could have an upside surprise on earnings because average hourly earnings doesn't take into account compositional changes in the labor market. And what we've seen is that some of the higher wage cohort have been coming out of the labor market, while some of the lower paid workers have been coming in. And that trend might be due a bit of a reversal, which will push wages from payrolls higher in line with things like the employment cost index. That could trigger a further repricing in Fed expectations, which would um, challenge the, the risk backdrop. Sam, based on your expectations, when you compare Europe to the United States right now, where do you think is closer to pricing in the terminal rate, or the ECB or the Fed? I think in the US, in the near term, that's where there's a greater risk that the market needs to price tighter central bank policy. In Europe, we had a pretty significant repricing already as the market has priced out a recession on the basis of the energy crisis proving considerably less acute than had been expected. In the US, we're getting this ongoing surprise hope where data simply is not slowing by as much as the market expected, either because policy lags are longer than people had anticipated or because central banks still have more work to do. That means we're in a scenario where there's really a lot of uncertainty for the market to be processing. And I think where the market's currently priced for the Fed is fairer than it was before, but from a risk-reward perspective, from a distribution of possible outcomes, we're probably nearer to where the market's likely to price the floor than where it's likely to price the ceiling. So we remain a bearish bias um, in the front end of the US curve. In Europe, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more balanced. We'd be neutral on both the duration and the front end.